What happened at your work which caused multiple people to all quit at once? They laid off half the company with no warning. This included a gentleman who was less than a year from retirement and had been there for 35 plus years. The company was shocked when half the remaining people abandoned ship shortly thereafter. At previous and final employer they did a round of layoffs. Now this is Europe, so you need a reason to fire people with a contract, and they said it was for economic reasons. So naturally, like rats on a ship, a massive exodus began. Everyone was looking for a new job. Management didn't expect this, so a month and a half later, they released their Christmas speech, calling for fresh young talent, and asking people to stick together like family when they fired 30 people just six weeks ago. Come January, the second wave of the exodus was well underway. The company consistently outpaced competing firms and found itself emerging as one of the industry leading agencies. This was also a California tech firm, so shorts, flip flops, beers at lunch, getting high on the roof were all rather common. But we were rapidly growing, and the atmosphere relocation made us a hot ticket for talent. Anyway, CFO and CMO cashed out and the CEO decided to totally remodel the company by making it far more corporate. On top of all of this, they implemented unattainable goals and removed our work from home policy. The final straw was they removed our rather generous vacation policy and replaced it with unlimited vacation which was a facade for you can take as much vacation as you want if we approve it. Like 14th of the company quit and immediately landed at better jobs. Also profit tanked. Our company is doing incredible, let's change everything. Or our company is doing incredible. What can we do to thank our staff for our sixth year of over 10% growth? When people wanted them to fix our broken bonus system, or give us actual raises really. Money is all you guys care about. Really? Money is all you guys care about. No Ted, I sit in this cubicle for 8 hours every day while the sun is nice and warm and people are on the beach because I ducking love working. I actually said in the chat, in my literal first Zoom meeting with the company, we're a sales and distribution company for Gate Motors. It's not like we're curing cancer or ending world hunger. Of course we're all here for the money. Cue the chat blowing up with yeah and what white guy said. Restructure of the way we're paid. What I used to do involved about 40% client interaction, 20% team coworker interaction, and 40% paperwork and case coordination stuff. Based on what we do that means only 40% of the time is technically billable, and there are really sticky rules for what is and isn't billable. So, logically, we were being paid on a salary model. Q management saying we can only make money for the time we have that is actually billable. Hashtag X200B, 14th of the department quit. Two of us on the same day. Wait, why is paperwork and case coordination not billable? It's the healthcare field. Only direct client contact can be billed to insurance. So what would happen if you simply didn't do the other 60%? Lots of bad things. If it's not documented, it didn't happen. Lots of lawsuits. Turned out our owner was keeping the social security money taken from our paychecks. And yes, he was caught. Edit, holy crap this blew up. Owner is just a term for owner of the company. I don't mean anything by it. You can pull that scam for about 4-5 to five years, really insane the lack of communication between the IRS and SS. Can confirm, I used to withhold taxes for babysitters for my kids, because you're required to if they are over 18. Had a payroll service to do all of the calculations, gave them pay stubs, the whole nine. Four years after I stopped doing this, I get a letter from SIS stating that they never received one quarterly filing for one of my kids' former babysitters and would I please forward it along. They gave me a summary of the reported wages. They were close, but off by a few bucks in either direction for the years before and after the one they were missing. I dug out the documents and found out that the reason for the confusion was that the payroll company accidentally filed on the previous year's form, pre-printed year on the side. I called so where they basically just said don't worry about that, we just need a number, the IRS is terrible about providing the totals to us. So I gave it to them verbally, they wrote it down and I haven't heard from them since. Hashtag X200B Edit, lol at all of the people paying me that I'm the scum of the earth for having paid my taxes and obeyed labor laws. That was an honesty check, if you gave bad numbers then they would have started a full investigation. Both the IRS and SS can be really lazy. 
The owner died and his idiot son took over and decided that the company didn't make him enough money and started to implement cost-cutting measures like turning off the AC in the building. Let me guess, two people are working on this? Why not use one person for half the cost? Anytime I've seen a mass exodus, it was because of poor management. I've never seen it organized, just a bunch of employees independently deciding to quit in the same month because the management was so bad. Yeah, that's the case on 9 times out of 10. People don't leave jobs, they leave shitty bosses. It seems to work the other way too. Given the demands responsibilities placed upon me, if I didn't have such a cool boss, I would have been out of there years ago. I was so happy when that happened to me. A manager I worked with before called me asking about one of the people in my team, saying he has a job opening there and thinks she'd be a good fit but wanted my opinion. It paid 15% more for about the same workload and gave her much better long-term stability so I gave her a big recommendation, because honestly she'd be perfect for the job, and her phone number so they'd contact her. She decided to stay because she's super happy here and loves coming here. Best employee I ever had TBH. I don't even do anything special, I just treat my people as I want my boss to treat me. It's not that hard FFS. I'll make a wild guess and say you are competent at your job and know what the job your underlings do actually entails. Most cases with bad managers I've seen was with people promoted outside their competence. This is most likely it. I managed a lab for 5 years and didn't lose one chemist when I was there. I knew the ins and outs of our process because I started there as a level 1 chemist. After I left, I heard things were going to shit and people were applying to work for other departments or outright leaving the company. The new manager they put in was a friend of someone in upper management and only cared about the pay, got paid way higher than me. Since then I've helped five of my former chemists get jobs at my current company, my wife's company, or was a reference for them for other competitors. Every once in a while we all still get together and hang out. Know your shit and treat people the way you want to be treated. Even if upper management is making your group do something you don't agree with, fight back, be honest with your group, and do it with them if your fight was lost. I used to work at a McDonald's, and we had a terrible manager who hated a lot of people working there. Everyone else hated him too, but no one wanted to call him out on his shit and quit. I was the first to do it, because I requested two weeks off in August of that year, about three months in advance, my family likes to plan our summer vacations early on. When August came around he had my schedule set up for all of August off except for those specific two weeks. There was no way that he could have misinterpreted my request. When I got my schedule, I stormed into the restaurant called him out on everything, and then quit on the spot. About two weeks after that, I heard from one of my work friends that five other people had enough and quit as well. I kind of felt good to be the first. What makes a good manager at these types of places is recognizing that 95% of their minimum wage employees could go get an equal paying job on their lunch break and start that day. Your store isn't special. The only personnel management you have to do as a GM is to make them want to work there. Do just enough to motivate them to make your store successful and then spend the rest of your energy making it a place they want to work. Make them happy and they'll naturally become better employees. The place I currently work at had a manager like this when I first started. That guy treated everyone with respect and was always friendly. If he saw you slacking head just politely come up to you and say hey, let's go find a project to work on and then he would help you with it. You just wanted to impress this guy and work hard for him. The guy was always at the store for opening, regularly stayed late to help close. He would regularly schedule beer and wing nights, threw us the best Christmas parties, and never made you feel bad for calling in sick. Everyone loved this guy. If the store did well he got a bonus and would use it to throw the Christmas party and beer nights. Well he eventually left and the manager he was replaced with is a fat lazy cunt who refuses to be at the store any longer than he absolutely has to. I once was called into work when I was recovering from an injury because this guy was going home early and there was no one to close. I refused and he still went home early. Needless to say people have been quitting left and right. And the quality of our store has nosedived because everyone thinks well if he doesn't give a duck about helping us then we don't give a fuck about helping him. As a result people just show up to collect their checks and do the bare minimum. It's sad to see for me because I remember how good we had it when I first started there. It starts at the top. If the manager can't be motivated you can be sure most employees won't be either. Tone at the top is very real.